and greetings, my friends. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Interesting Ideas. I'm Stan Houston. That was uh, my favorite of my motley collection of sounders. It's uh, the one that the BBC used for many, many years, and I've always loved it, and uh, it reminded me. I'm going back and doing a lot of uh, remembering lately of my wonderful time when I spent the summer in London studying at the BBC, where they uh, tried to teach me and help me learn uh, BBC broadcasting. And, of course, uh, they enjoyed the fact that I was... Uh, only the only American in the study group, and they wanted to make a point of uh, letting me know that uh, the American way of broadcasting was not the best, and, and that theirs, of course, was. And, of course, I uh, learned a lot from them, and uh, I gently from time to time reminded them, well, you're not always the best, but uh, you're pretty good, because that's what the BBC really is, and they really are. Hey, uh, what we want to do today is uh, do a little remembering, and uh, it's a fun story for a Wednesday. You know, Wednesday is uh, kind of the hump day, thump day, uh, and I'd love to share it with you. So, uh, yeah, the title is right, Painting the Floor Red. That's right, Painting the Floor Red. I did that. However, before we enjoy that, uh, I do need to point out that all of us need to have the courage to face the truth. And this is going to be a tough summer in many ways. And I don't need to go through the details. You're overwhelmed by that all the time. However, there was one situation that I think we better take, uh, as I would say, some prayerful attention to. And it was an article in the American Spectator, uh, just June 12th by a, a gentleman named John Jiang, John Jiang, and here it goes, is famine coming. Putin's barbarism has made an already bad situation worldwide so much worse, and uh, he then goes in to answer that question, and it is it is likely in many cases that we will suffer uh, uh, exceptional famine. And he points out something that I knew because uh, not only the BBC, but I taught Russian history at one time, and that's uh, another part of my life and story. But, of course, the Ukraine was, was called uh, the, the breadbasket. Uh, it was the breadbasket. Uh, it was the food place for the old Soviet Union, and it always has been and still is. And uh, a lot of wheat and sunflower and vital fertilizer stuff comes from the Ukraine, and it goes worldwide. And that's why the Russians were trying to cut off the ports, because they can cut off a lot of the uh, incoming weapons that might be helpful to the Ukraines, but it can also cut off uh, their meager but could be substantial supply of income as they try and export their uh, many goods. And one of the goods they have is, truly, they are in the food business, and uh, food prices are going up, and uh, it costs a lot to buy food. We, of course, in America are still very blessed <laughs> Uh, our prices are much higher, but they may, may be nothing compared to what some people have to pay, and uh, some people would be very grateful. I oftentimes think, because I've been around the world, whenever I go into the beautiful supermarket here in North Carolina, I know that there are millions and millions of people all around the world who would look at that supply of food, and they could not believe their eyes. They would not believe it because nothing like that has ever existed in their life or in their world, and they couldn't even imagine it. So uh, every day, whatever the day and whatever the day brings, we are blessed. But I would encourage you in your thoughts and prayers uh, to perhaps look that article up. Uh, it's the American Spectator. It's June 12th. John Jiang and Is Famine Coming? And he, he has some thoughts that uh, we should probably uh, be aware of and perhaps see if there's something that in our own thoughts and work that we do, we could uh, be prepared for. Well, <laughs> now what do we do? Well, we're going to do the program. That's right. 
This is Interesting Ideas, and the title of the program is just exactly that. Painting the Floor Red and Some Related Thoughts. And that program begins right now. In many ways, the life that I've been in has been fortunate for me in many ways. First of all, I was a teacher, and so I had to read a lot, and I accumulated hundreds, I probably in my lifetime, thousands of books. I've given most of them away, by the way, uh, as I'm at this age and stage. I've read them, or I'm not going to read them, and so I pass them on. And uh, I accumulated a lot of material from the classes that I taught. And as a result of that, I've also been an online teacher for the last five, seven years. And so I have a number of classes and courses, of probably hundreds of them, where I have that material. And I stash it away. And then, of course, I've done thousands <laughs> of radio programs. And uh, I have all kinds of those things around. And then lots of blogs and articles, you name it. Most of it was never published formally, you know, in a magazine or uh, in a book form. It was just things that I used and uh, gave to my clients and uh, put them out there as they saw fit in the, the teaching world I was in. And uh, it's fun to go through some of that again. Just uh, today, I found something and I said, oh, I forgot about that. And it goes back 15 some years and it's really a very good piece that I can use in one of the projects I'm doing right now on uh, the Jesus Entrepreneur Experience. And I looked at it and I said, when did I do that? I can't, I can't even remember doing it. But there it is. Got my name on it. And I can see it. It's, it, it's the way I think and the way that I believe. And so I, I know I did it. I just can't remember having done it. There we go. I also encourage you to do that in the same way. That's what, you know, keeping a journal is all about. Now, a lot of people say, Stan, I can't journal. Well, here's the nice thing. Right now, what you can do is you can actually just pick up your phone and uh, the voice recorder, almost all of them have it, and uh, you can dictate a, a little essay, a little story, a little note, a, a little reflection. Then you send it to your email account and then you have that little audio file and you can just file it away. Or you can do, you can go to one of the new software and uh, it will then print the written, a uh, written text version of your audio presentation. And it'll be really, really close. Uh, it gets it really good these days. You can do that and I would encourage you to do a lot of that. Again, you have a voice, use it. Remember that from last week. You have a voice, use it. And uh, what will happen is you will become a man or a woman of greater interest, greater emotion. You will. And you won't be like I was for so many years, emotionally constipated. Uh, you'll be more thoughtful. It will be good for you to do that. Well, I found this article, and I remember this now, but... I had forgotten about it, but it also had something that I know is very, very important. So uh, with your permission, here we go, uh, just kind of a reprise blast from the past. This weekend, I continued working on uh, redoing the decorating of the little office hideaway from where I write and plan my daily performances out on the stage of life. I gave the floor the second coat of red paint. <laughs> That's right. Yes, the title is right. The office where I work has a red floor. Now, it's not a bright fire engine red, but it is definitely very red. I have a red floor. Now, I love it. Uh, it's a, a bit strange, but it makes quite a statement. I'm increasingly finding that after so many years of living rather safe and conventional, 
that finding ways of being, saying, and performing on the edge has left me with only one regret. I should have done a lot of more red floor painting in the past. I copied that again. I should have done a lot more red floor painting in the past. And I think you know what I mean. Do unconventional things. Do strange things. Do different things. Uh, do things that people wonder why you did it. <laughs> The red floor reminded me of what I read over the holiday time. Last year, I finished my book on how to do performance coaching. It's pretty good stuff. And what I did, I put 11 separate booklets together on some specific aspect of coaching and guiding others. I uh, turned the booklets into a manuscript and started to do the rewrite. It is hard work to go back and make your words just right, and uh, to, to keep your reader reading, enjoying, and learning. Uh, that's true. It's hard work. I shared this with my daughter, who was home for the holidays, and uh, she's also an editor and a writer in her own right, and she's made her mark in the New York City and continues to do so. Do so. <laughs> she suggested that I get a copy of a book by a friend of hers. Now it is called The Forest for the Trees, an editor's advice to writers by Betty Lerner. A great and worthwhile read, even if you are not a writer or writer wannabe. Here's what Betsy says. Betsy says this in one of her great many insights about writing and life. Great writing is meant to crush us entertain and move us, return us to ourselves with some greater understanding of the world and its workings and ourselves. Wow, think about that. Great writing is meant to crush us, entertain and move us, and then return us to ourselves with some greater understanding of the world and its workings. Understanding the times and knowing what to do. Now, in another challenging line, she says, you must give yourself permission to tell. Most people give up the vain hope that people will like your work. People like vanilla ice cream. They say, I hope that they will love my work. Now, here's what she said. No. No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Hope that they love your work or they hate it. That they find it exquisite or revolting. I think Coustou, Jean Coustou, a poet, had the right idea when he said, Listen carefully to the first criticism of your work. Note just what it is about your work that the critics don't like and cultivate it. There, there we go. That's the only part of your work that's individual and worth keeping. Throw off the shackles of approval, of wanting to be liked. Pretty strong stuff. And I still need to hear that. It challenges me. Now this is why. And again, this is still part of my life. I confess that I was raised with this great lifeline that came from my parents. What will the neighbors or any others think? <laughs> Do any of you have that line in your legacy? For much of my life, I gave more attention to what was true and right for others rather than what might be my own truth. And you know what? I imagine that many of you who are reading this or hearing this can join me in that confession. So, <laughs> perhaps one of these challenges is for you, particularly right now when we are in difficult times. Uh, you might want to be... 
the person to reclaim the authenticity you once had. The uniqueness of who you are and what you are called to be and do and to go after, go after what gives you deep gladness. What gives you deep gladness? Go after it. Stop being vanilla and start painting a few more red floors. I'm Stan Houston. These are interesting ideas. I hope that was helpful. It was helpful for me, and like I oftentimes said in uh, my radio programs of the past, I think I still do. Hey, uh, I did this program for me. I was talking to myself, and you're welcome to listen in. But uh, particularly, um, sometimes it is in the difficult times that we realize that we need to uh, not play it safe because we can't play it safe. So do some new and powerful and challenging things. Now, I've done a lot of red floors, and some of them turned out to be disasters. I mean, where I lost money, I lost time, I lost energy, I lost face, almost. Yeah, some of the projects just failed, flat on failed. A number of them have been very successful. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if it's half and half. That's how it goes. But here I am in my 70s starting three new projects. Three new red floors, and I have no idea how they're going to turn out. But you know what? I'm going to give it everything I've got. Body, soul, spirit. I'm going to give it everything I got. Perhaps I could be helpful to you. Reach out to me, stanhouston at gmail.com, stanhouston at gmail.com. Uh, if you've got some red floor painting, some work in your business that uh, could use perhaps a little wisdom and insight, I think I have uh, many years of that, and uh, I'm really pretty good at this performance coaching stuff, and uh, certainly I can get you on the radio and make you really good at being on the radio. Stan Houston at gmail.com, Stan Houston at gmail.com. Best and blessings to you. And let's pray for the people who are going to go through famine this summer and this year. Bye for now.